All right, hey everybody, we are back with another edition of Casey Music Talk. My guest today is a violinist and fiddler here mm -hmm. in town, maybe uh, Colleen Deeker. How hey, you doing? Hey, what's up, Rob? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. So you and I met at Westport Saloon, mm -hmm. I think a long time ago. It was at one of their jams. They had their, was it the bluegrass one? It was on a Sunday evening. A Sunday, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was cool because I'd never seen you play before, and we got up and we were able to do like some twin fiddling kind of I stuff. Forget, somebody invited me to that, and maybe it was you, but um, I don't remember who I was there with, but I also met other people there that I really connected with. I don't normally go to jams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, that might be the last jam session, like, you know, organized jam session like that, you mm -hmm. know, obviously. Life is just a big jam session. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> so, like, so I don't know much about you. We've only met one or two times. So tell me, tell me a little bit how you got started playing, like when you were little or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I was little. Um, I started playing when I was about five years old. Mm -hmm. um, probably a little bit before. My mom just kind of started my siblings and I on piano. You know, when we were very small, we would just kind of play, and she'd help us. Mm -hmm. um, it got pretty formal though when I was five, and um, we practiced every day, and mm -hmm. you know it was very methodical and disciplined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I played piano. I picked up violin when I was seven, and um, my sister also played violin, and we played together. I remember playing canon and B at a mm -hmm. really young age. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, just That's a lot cool. of practice every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. were you a Suzuki kid? Sort of. It was like mm -hmm. a mixture of Suzuki and, you know, there was a music studio in Wichita where I was growing up called mm -hmm. Vance Studios, mm -hmm. and it's still there. And there, it's an amazing studio, this musical family. They just give, everyone gives lessons. They teach, like... Oh, Rex. Yeah, Rex. Rex Vance, I know. Yeah, yeah I know him. Yeah. yeah I know his daughter, that's... too. I can't remember her name, but... Marissa? I, I, Marissa, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I know them. I climbed yeah. trees with Marissa. Like, yeah, that's We grew that's up fun. together, kind of. Yeah, until we moved to Kansas City, and then I studied with Marvin Grunbaum, mm -hmm. Maria Maxwell, yeah. <laughs> Mar Marvin's out of control. He's very good. Marvin's awesome. I love him and his whole family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they. I kind of like grew up with their family after we moved to Kansas City, and yeah, a lot of really great musical role That's models. That's cool. Yeah. Like Rex has that ridiculous like seven string or something. I, I saw know. him. At, that thing is nuts. I played like, it. He got it after I my family left Wichita, but. Mm -hmm. We visited them, or they visited us, or something, and I got to play it. And I was so young, you know, and mm. I was still, I was just like, oh my god. Because <laughs> it's like a V, right? And it fits, or the one that I saw was like a, it, it looked like one of those guitars that, that comes down like this, but it's like a V on the other side. Oh. And so that's how it goes into your shoulder. I was so like young it's a when v. I I don't know how to describe it, but it's yeah. like, and you're like, you know, it's like, it's <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> But I don't know. He he thought it was pretty awesome. But they're they're a really nice family. Yes, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great work. Yeah. Did your did your mom play? Yeah, she mm -hmm. still does. She plays the flute, the guitar, piano, organ. Mm -hmm. Um, she's in the Kansas City Flute Choir. She sings with the Kansas City Korean Choir. Mm -hmm. And she um, she plays the piano and the organ and her flute at um the church where she and my dad mm -hmm. um are congregation members. Cool. Yeah. And that, see, that's another interesting thing because I, I found that. By the way, guys, this is our 50th interview. Woo! Number 50! Five zero, which I is didn't pretty know fun. that. Yeah. I feel honored. Yeah, dude, you should be. It's, it's, been, talk. it's been fun. What's up? Uh, <laughs> and, but, but that's been a theme on the show is basically almost everyone that's playing out right now, I ask them this question, they're like, my mom taught piano, right? Mm -hmm. My dad sang in choir. Mm -hmm. My my parents had music blaring all over the house as a kid. You know, that's been a because because I'm trying to throw into my head how how do you become really good? Yeah. You know what what are these ten things that make good make somebody really good? And that's been one of the through lines is really? that every one of these people had music in their house as a kid. Oh, you know, interesting. And so I. I I think there's a hundred percent something to that, you know, because they, they had it, they had jazz. There's definitely something to that, but I think there's also something to be said for people that come from, they're the only one in their family that's mm. musical. 
and they're like a genius at it. But mm-hmm. and also there's a difference between that kind of musician and someone who came from a musical family. Mm-hmm. But like some people have it in them like undeniably and no one else in their family yeah. is like that. Right. I've, I've definitely run into that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think the ten things are practice. Like mm. practice. Get play your instrument and don't don't practice in like a like a self shaming way. Like play because you love it and spend a lot of hours mm. loving your playing. Um, I remember when I was a teenager I spent a lot of time busking. Mm-hmm. at the river market yeah and that just changed my playing and i i really struggled you know like just having such a strict upbringing i just thought mm. i can't do this mm. i wanted to quit piano quit violin um but yeah i kind of like claimed it for myself mm-hmm. and that made all the difference mm-hmm. what do you what do you think about that because we've talked on that on the show that's huge that's a huge deal because all of us in classical <clears throat> We we get that right. We we get Are this you idea. Classical? Oh sure, yeah oh, okay. yeah yeah yeah. Um, and like, but th- we we get the the drilly kind of stuff into our head all the time, yeah. right? That what you were just talking about of the, it's it has to be perfect. Oh. It has to be all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you have when you go listen to the blues guys or mm-hmm. what you know. I'm just I'm yeah. a little bit of stereotyping here, but <laughs> they they come from the more fun area. Yeah. You know what what do you think about that? Do you I think that it's good to, to want to be perfect mm. and to practice for perfection. But there's a difference between that kind of practice and like the practice of I hate myself, I mm. hate my playing. Like it literally is in the mind. Like if your mind is in the right mindset when you're practicing, it can be magical mm. and, and like healing and wonderful and you make, you know, you grow by leaps and bounds. But there is a different kind of practice and it holds musicians back like I see a lot of classical musicians who have an incredible vocabulary incredible musical sensitivity Mm -hmm. and they don't want to improvise Mm -hmm. and that's because the practice habits of classical people I mean sorry to make such a broad generalization but it's it's It's, negative it's 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 based on a um, not a not rewarding system and like to improvise and speak the language that is music and use the vocabulary that's been given to you as a classical musician. Like you have to free your mind from that whole, like it's gotta be perfect. Like what's the right note? Like I need to execute this perfectly in the perfect Mm -hmm. sensitivity. Like use those for yourself, Mm claim those tools for yourself. Um, Yeah, that's kind of like my gospel right now. It's like Mm -hmm. everyone should speak the language and say what you mean and know what you're saying and like know yourself. Like, I think it's important for everyone to learn to improvise. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's that needs to be, um, you know, ear training, all that stuff. Like, mm-hmm. got to do it. We've talked about that a lot, too, is, is the, the idea of, the, you know, a lot of the symphony type people are, are you know, insanely good sight readers. And yeah. they, they, kick, they kick my ass at sight reading, mm-hmm. you know, but... You get them up on a blue stage and they pee their they pants don't and they don't know what to do, do you know. They, and so, no. like, and so that that was another question I had for you. So, I really love playing all sorts of kinds of genres. Okay. Like, it, it cracks me up. Like all the different, you know, going into country and kind of getting not into country mode, but but kind of knowing that I, I need to do this country. But then you go back over to the classical quartet and I'm like, okay, now I add in more vibrato and now I, I need to, you know, and like. It, the 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 genres crack me up is that when when somebody stays in classical for forever and then they never get a chance to improv some right? people and only like, play blues forever you yeah. know mm-hmm. i mean a lot of people are genre stuck mm-hmm. and i think if you can sort of see music as this whole big thing it's all the same it's all sounds you're listening you're responding mm-hmm. that's what music is yeah you know so whether you're attached to the page or you you know, you like to hear blues or you, whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, being able to speak, understand, listen, and, and, you know, with people that are very experienced in genre hopping, I find, you know, you have to be patient with the, you have to like speak the language of who you're playing music with, you know, mm-hmm. like that's, um, that's something I kind of had to learn, you know, like, mm-hmm. especially if, if you become a teacher, you learn real fast, like you are teaching a language and you have to like speak it, speak like a kindergartner sometimes or Mm -hmm. speak like, you know, speak like a teenager, speak like whatever so that they understand you so that you can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Same thing with music. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then, so then now here's a, here's a deeper question. 
If you don't know how to fiddle, can you teach fiddle? If you don't know how to fiddle, can you teach fiddle? I guess no. <laughs> you know, that, that cracks me up when I go look at the orchestras. You know, and then they're try. I know what the I know what the directors are trying to do, like with these middle school groups and the high school groups. Yeah, is they'll try to bring this like jazzy swingy song in there to get the kids more engaged. Uh -huh. But they can't like bow a swing beat. Like the conductor oh, can't. Do you know okay, what I'm okay. saying? You know, like they. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Can you can you teach what you do not know? You know, it's a really deep question I, I I'm asking. Maybe they're not know. trying to teach something they don't know, but they are trying to show the kids. You know, mm -hmm. music isn't just da 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 da. Yeah. It's also way in it, nah, nah, yeah. nah, 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 nah. and maybe they need to learn that too. But mm -hmm. kudos to those teachers for like trying to do their best to like mm -hmm. give the kids everything that they can give like even what they don't the, what they probably know they don't have you know mm -hmm. yeah that's gonna an be interesting a kid way. in there that's gonna really get attached to the other style the swing style and he'll be right. like you know but and the teacher maybe didn't nail it but that kid you know got that experience yeah so. okay so you'd still see some super validity yeah, in that absolutely. definitely yeah absolutely yeah. yeah yes yeah that's interesting one one reason why i shy away from teaching because i'm a private teacher i I shy away from teaching fiddle stuff is because really? I'm not a very good fiddler. Okay, I'm not I, a very good fiddler either. Like bluegrass style fiddling, I'm talking about. I can do country stuff. I, I play country bands all the time, but it's a little different. <laughs> yeah. And so, and even the Irish stuff, I can do a little bit of that. But, uh, but the. <laughs> make it till you make it's a little it raw. Bit you see, <laughs> see, that's that's possible. But I I try to stay shy away from that. Like I can I can explain it to them like a very very baseline explanation. But, yeah. You know if. So anyway, but that, that's, so do well, you, I think in that case, you know, if you have a student, so in, if you have a student that you're teaching classical, I assume you just stick with teaching classical. Classes. No, but, but a lot of classical. Yeah. I, 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 I see. I can, I show them all sorts of country stuff. I uh -huh. show them how to do rock stuff, jazz stuff, blues stuff. You know, I go a, a lot of different ways, but, but that very specific, and I even do them, I give them some Irish tunes. We learn yeah. the tunes. I show them. Hey, you don't have to exactly do these bowings. Yeah. You know, you can kind of screw make around with it, a little, make it your own. But you know, if they're gonna ask me, I want to learn how to do some hardcore uh, Bob Will style fiddling. You know, or well, you know, if it's, you have students you know, that are good enough to do that, mm -hmm. then you can give them to someone who knows what they're doing with bluegrass. There you go. Or you can probably figure out enough to like show them what it basically is. You know. Well, and, and again, if they bring me a fiddle tune that I, that's like sheet music, I mean, I'm going to sit there and play it with them, you know, I mean, there, there's yeah. stuff I, and, and I can definitely tell them some stuff, like this is a very violin-y thing, mm -hmm. you can't play fiddle music doing this crap, yeah, I mean, you got to yeah, keep yeah. it small, uh -huh. right, you got you to gotta make sure it's, you're not slowing behind, you know, there's some stuff yeah. I'm going to be able to tell them about it, you know, but... You know, I just try to stay away from that as much. I, I can definitely teach them about the theory of it. Okay, we're over a G chord. Over, yeah, you know, yeah. there's a ton of stuff I can tell them about uh -huh. it. But I just typically stay away from that because I don't want to. That's my fear is that I want to, I want to teach them how to do it right, mm -hmm. not just kind of. You know, and that's just my choice. You know, I don't want to teach them half half ass. You know, mm -hmm. I want to teach them how to do it exact. You know. The right way to do it that's really interesting you know? like I, I don't teach anymore mm -hmm. and I used to teach and I always I mean I'm not like a trained teacher but I always just let my students take the lead mm -hmm. and it was really easy to figure out you know which kids their parents were forcing them to take lessons <laughs> and then I would just like you know I just didn't want to teach those kids because yeah, it was yeah. babysitting mm -hmm. um, but I did get some really good students mm -hmm. like teaching was definitely rewarding and then you know if there was something that my student wanted to learn that I wasn't able to teach, I'd just be like, get a different teacher, or I just did my best to show them everything I knew. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. I don't yeah. teach anymore though because yeah. I'm too focused on myself <laughs> <laughs> and like teaching. I I just fell in love with these kids. I was like, these yeah. kids are amazing, and you know, you invest everything you have, you know, mm. to like make your kids right. like get it because it's so important. And oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think maybe later in my life I might teach. But yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, so another thing that I'd love to talk to you about is you, you were talking about, uh, going to Berkeley mm -hmm. and, uh, I have quite a bit of, uh, opinions about the academia and we, we already discussed a little bit of that in the sense that 
at least at Wichita State, it was, you know, they obviously had like the jazz department and stuff, but we were in the, you know, classical way, you know. Oh. And so they, you know. Did they, you do violin performance? Oh, uh, Ed. Yeah, oh, okay. music Ed. Yeah, okay. so. But my, my point is, is that they were very much in that realm of you're going to do it perfect. Here's, you know, you're going to learn the perfect vibrato. You're in. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad I had that because now I know how to play. Like technique wise, you <laughs> yeah. know, I know how to play pretty good now, not uh -huh. just because of that, but that classical style training, you yeah. know, I can play in tune now pretty well and keep on beat pretty well and, mm -hmm. you know, and know how to not use too much bow on the fast stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, efficiency and all that kind of stuff. And I thought that. Anyway, I have a whole lot of, you know, comments yeah. on academia in general and how they structure the classes. And now I'm like, do you know what I mean? Like thinking about my play. <laughs> Am I doing it right? <laughs> no, but uh, what, what was your like, and not just a college experience, but like in the ed or in the music department experience. Can you just talk about that? Like how did you in like college? it? Yeah. Did you like yeah, it? Yeah, it was, like... it's Berkeley is in, you know, it's a music playland. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. all music classes, whatever kind of music mm -hmm. you want to study, they have the best people, mm. like people that are really good at it. And um, I auditioned on piano and I was mostly doing classical. I was going, going through like a rebellious phase and I was like, I'm never playing violin, mm. I'm done with it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I kind of started doing jazz crossover. Like mm. Berkeley, the vibe is to be a genre hopper. It's like, yeah. understand the language. Like that's the whole vibe of that school. A lot of people have a lot of things to say about my school, but it's the, the, overall mission is like to get musicians to like speak the same language and to listen to each other i mean obviously it's like high level niche music a lot of it mm -hmm. which is great um i was there for two years and then i thought i was gonna go to nursing school and be a nurse and i almost did it but then i realized i wanted to be a musician mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah i um i did a lot of piano i mean i practiced so much and yeah. it's so crazy because Guess what? The cliche is right. I don't use it what I did in college. Like, mm -hmm. there was one class I took called Improvisational Concepts mm -hmm. um, with Mitch Hopper's brilliant genius of a man who just like gets musicians together. And at Berkeley, you have musicians from all over the world mm -hmm. that play all these different instruments and styles. And he gets like um, a two semester class together. And you play like duets, trios, mm -hmm. quartets with like weird random assortment, like weird ensemble. And you, you like really learn to listen to each other and play together. That's fun. That sounds neat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we didn't have classes like that at WSU, Ensemble you know, if, playing. I mean, we had quartet, you know, string quartet and you yeah. got your credit or what, you know, we had that kind of stuff, but not that, not what you're describing. Yeah. And they, they would have in the jazz department. I just didn't take any jazz classes in college. So, mm. so they probably would have had something like that there, mm -hmm. but that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. I just really learned a lot about listening and. Um, it just gave me such a solid foundation for everything that I do now that's my career, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so even though I was like a piano major the whole time, I did play a lot of violin yeah. while I was there. Yeah. I put a pickup on my violin for the first mm -hmm. time. I like mm -hmm. figured out, oh my God, it can sound so crazy. And, you like, went to the dark side. I <laughs> went hardcore. Yeah. I have a pedal board now. I have, oh, like, that's cool. Yeah. I, I what do you think about that? Talk, talk about that. Like oh, going God. from acoustic into oh, the, all of that man. nonsense. It was hard. Okay. Like. It was, it's hard to like something you've believed in your whole life mm -hmm. and you like have to accept the reality, which is like many other things are true. Mm, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I have two electric fiddles mm -hmm. and, um, you know, when you grow up in a place where you can just pick up a guitar or a fiddle or a flute or whatever, and you can make music like electric instruments. They, you have to plug them in, you have to figure out how to make them sound good. Mm. They're not fun to play. Like, mm. I, if I take out my electric fiddle right now, it sounds mm -hmm. like poo-poo. Pretty bad. Yeah, yep. it's not good. Um, and, but then you play with pedals, and then you figure out, like, oh, my God, I can sound badass, you know? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I kind of went down that road um, with uh, Flanagan's right hook. Actually, mm -hmm. it's kind of started back in the day when I was playing with Making Movies, mm -hmm. their Latin rock band. Yeah, I, they, Enrique, the lead singer, he like kind of, he was like, you should get a delay pedal. Like mm -hmm. you need a sound 
delay you know, suite. cooler. <laughs> and so I got, kind of got into that, and I had the DL4 delay pedal. Mm -hmm. I broke it. I got a new one, broke that one. Um, and now I have the, an Ibanez delay pedal mm -hmm. that I cool. really like. Um, and then I have... I have a looper. I got heavy into looping, but I'm sweet. too. I I've only done it on a few gigs. Yeah. Like, it's really really fun. But I'm kind of a musician that loves to play with other musicians. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not really a solo artist. Right. I yeah. can be, and I did like some entertaining. You know, a few years ago, I would like entertain like this party or that party. Yeah. And, oh, I still like to like do the strolling violin entertainment. That's yeah. Fun. But yeah, I love to play with other people. Mm -hmm. So. So I got I got a, a nerdy question for you because yeah. I don't have very many violinists on the show. Talk talk a little bit about that with the idea of the electric violin and the regular violin because I totally agree with you. That's the thing that drives me nuts about them is that I they, they sound really bad on their own, mm -hmm. and then you plug them in and they sound better. Like what like t talk about a little bit of the differences between the two. Okay, well. When you're playing with a band where everyone has amplifiers, there's a drummer, you know, there's like, oh, just tons of sound, you know? Mm -hmm. Even though you have your violin, you know, and you have, do you have a pickup on your mm -hmm. fiddle? Yeah. yeah. You like plug in, you have a nice like mixer and whatever, and you like, or, or um, you know, you can EQ yourself, make sure you sound good. Well, you're gonna get overpowered with a fiddle sound like no matter how loud you crank it and you, if it gets too loud it sounds like sh shit you mm -hmm. know sorry yeah you're right um <laughs> and then um you get an electric instrument well you can do this with your acoustic fiddle too you can play it and have it plugged into the pedals and like you can get some effects you can get some tube scream you can mm -hmm. like get your yeah. sound to fatten out a little bit to match the other instruments well once you get an electric instrument that electric signal is so much cleaner mm -hmm. and it goes through the pedals really nicely mm -hmm. and so i i just got over myself i was like whatever i'm gonna play this 600 hundred dollar yamaha electric fiddle <laughs> because it sounds badass with the pedals yep. mm -hmm. you know and yeah. i've gotten really into pedals and like the kind of things that they've done now with you know they're better now aren't they oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. have some cool things yeah. and like then you can make a whole song like revolving around a certain pedal that like makes this freaking awesome sound mm -hmm. so it, it's been a journey and it's really really fun to play with and it, it t it's like another skill you know just like looping you kind of yeah. have to like be you have to know when to turn it on and off and like it's yeah. a th it's a third limb yeah right i mean you, like, you especially the wah pedal i mean you now you're not oh, dealing yeah. with two now you got a third i, I haven't mastered the wah i did i do have yeah. one in my possession yeah. but i haven't mastered it yet yeah but yeah and then so but then with the electric fiddle you don't get the joy of like the acoustic mm -hmm. vibe and like yeah. that's what that's where we started that's where we came yeah. from so it's like I, I have both like yeah. I need to be able to play my nice violin and play with the string quartet or like have an acoustic jam mm -hmm. also like if I'm about to rock out and melt faces mm -hmm. like I'm gonna have my electric fiddle right. I'm gonna have a nice signal and a fat sound yeah yeah I, see I found again I'm sorry to the audience where like I'm like geeking out on some violin pedals right now but like <laughs> the I found that that with mine, I got a bags, you know, and it's mm -hmm. pretty nice, you know. It, it gets very, I mean, the sound is very clean. It sounds like a violin, yeah, like an actual violin. And Do you have a bags electric violin? No pickup. Oh, okay. yeah. So okay. it's a regular violin with yeah. the, and but I found that in general, the wah pedal sounds fine. The delay, reverb, you know, there's a bunch of them that sound good. But boy, when I try to put that distortion on there, it's trash you know you should I mean, try it, my yeah. electric fiddle yeah they will convert and, yeah. like in a second and they're so yeah. cheap like they do make really expensive ones but you don't need one you know what mm -hmm. i mean like the cheap ones That's look really cool yeah. and like i don't have to if i'm playing four hours at a bar with drunk people you know i don't have to worry about my nice violin, you know what I mean? That's true. And yeah, like that's if I travel, yeah. I travel with like a my Yamaha and it works. It's it's the right vessel. Like yeah, it really yeah, is. They make good stuff. I also right. have a Mark Wood electric violin, mm -hmm. which is just the stick, you know? And oh, you right, get used yeah. to the body and when there's no body, it's like hard to tune. Yeah. So I try to force myself to play it so that I like practice. And it looks really badass. It looks like Batman. Yeah, right, all right, yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I my my students ask me this all the time where they're 
and, and we're talking about a number of things. We're talking about four or five strings. Uh, we're talking about pickup or electric or regular, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they're, they're asking me, well, what should I get? And I'm like, man, you got to think about my advice to them would be, what, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. You know, don't, don't just get something we'll and then go, something. okay, well now what do I do? With, you know, you, you got to think about what you're, make you know, sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Or like not even know what you're doing playing wise, obviously, but, but like no, yeah, like don't yeah. get stuff willy nilly, especially mm -hmm. a violin. Mm -hmm. You know, I always, of course, encourage people to play. Like, yeah, right. get an instrument and play. I think everyone should play an instrument. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do think that people like to just have things. Mm -hmm. People have nice instruments that never get played, and like pretty shiny if you're colors. Wealthy you know, enough like, you know. to have that kind of thing, like play your instruments. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree though that that's the other thing that I'm telling a lot of my students is that they want the purple one you know the, the, pretty, <laughs> per, the pretty shiny colors you know like yeah. the the cereal aisle or something I, mean, I just want the pretty colored one and I'm like yeah but you can't play why do you, want you don't know what you're colors? doing you know yeah like, do you want to look cool or do you want to play music mm. that's a question ask yourself that question first <laughs> I, I think guitar players are the worst, and I'll call them all. Oh out. shit! You know, I mean, they're they are obsessed with their equipment. They are absolutely. Oh man, this watt, this one has this many watts, and this, you know. And I'm like, dude, yeah, but you can't like, you know, four chords, dude. <laughs> like, you know, go get. I don't know. Oh that's my God, what I'm talking that's so talking funny. crap. But but yeah, uh, people love to be nerds. <laughs> I'm not nerdy enough. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, ever. yeah. <laughs> what uh so I got another question for you. So talk talk a little bit about uh what what you guys been doing with Flanagan's right hook. Well, Flanagan's right hook. So they these dudes. <laughs> um yeah, it's such a masculine sounding name, isn't it? I was in the Steamboat Bandits, also very masculine yeah. sounding name. I just want to start a chick band and have like, you know, the I don't know. I haven't thought of a name yet, but just something where I'm not like, ah, you know. <laughs> it's so it's so uh, aggressive. I don't know what, what what's the what's they're, the word yeah, for it. Yeah, I mean, they're it's aggressive. Yeah. But it's an aggressive band, and I must say, I've enjoyed playing aggressive. <laughs> like, man, it's what I've been waiting for my whole life. It's like I am one third of this band that is like about to punch you in the face. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> And that feels good. It's like it's like beating the shit out of a heavy bag. Mm -hmm. That feels good. Mm -hmm. um, I turn on my pedals and I'm just like, mm -hmm. like monster mode. Yep. <laughs> That's another example of what do we get to do in classical? Well, not that. You know, in, a, I mean, in a way, they you know get to I mean? do it, but it's it's not, it's not like what I do with Flanagan's. Yeah. It's more, yeah, it's mm -hmm. not the same. It's not the same. You I know? love playing with Flanagan's though. Mm -hmm. I want that to be recorded. It's been so much fun mm -hmm. and I've played with a lot a lot of bands you know a lot of ensembles and they really give me space to do whatever I want mm -hmm. and they That's it's a cool. safe space and it's like no just try it you know and there's mm -hmm. no it's it's just the coolest coolest vibe um that I've experienced musically yeah that's cool so there there's another issue right there is that I know this happens like, for example, in the football world or something, when you have a coach that's been there for 30 years, mm -hmm. then you have this new young guy or whatever, some new young coach <laughs> or whoever, and they come in and they're like, you know, well, he doesn't do it like the old guy. And I'm like, well, well I'm not the not old gonna, guy, yeah, you know? Exactly. And so like how, and, and like you, you talking about them giving you space kind of to put your, because 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 Shane was there for a bit, you right? I mean, Shane he played Ford, with you know. Okay, Shane is a hero of mine. I saw him. I saw Flanagan's Right Hook when I was twenty one, mm -hmm. and I was in Tom Foolery's. Mm -hmm. They were playing like Karma Police or something, and I was just like, oh, mm -hmm. I love these guys, you know. And Shane, he is just phenomenal. It's great. So uh, I, you know, I became a fan then, and then I had a gig with Shane in two thousand twelve. It was like some big collaborative. Thing in Kansas City for Water Fire. I don't know if you mm, are familiar yeah, with that mm -hmm. event. Um, but yeah, he and I worked together and I was so nervous and mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, and I got to like sit next to him and play. Yeah. And then we both were hired to play with Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Oh, that's fun. Which yeah. he'd done for several years. I've done it a few times now. Yeah, and then we carpooled together to Wichita. I got to know him. Super nice guy. Mm -hmm. And then I like started listening to his playing a lot. Like, mm -hmm when I started subbing in with Flanagan's and just like mimicking everything he does. And he's just, he gave me tons of advice on like practice and playing, 
like, um, you know, how to approach my instrument and things like that. And then when he got the gig in Miami, mm -hmm. and I was, I didn't really know what was going on. I just thought I was like subbing, and then now it's like, oh, I'm in the band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. you know, everyone loves to talk about Shane, including the dudes in the band. Like mm -hmm. everyone's like, Shane did this, Shane did that. Oh, he used to play this, and so there's a lot for me. Like I've listened to the YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. um, I'm never gonna cover everything that they did. They right. were together for 16 years, right. and I've given up the dream of like. I can do it. I can be Shane. I can't be Shane. Right. I can be this chick mm -hmm. that's sitting here. And um, we've done some really cool things. Like I got to perform on my ripstick, which is that two way right, right. skateboard yeah. I told We were you talking about, about that. Yeah, and yeah. I love getting the opportunity to do that. I did that at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Wow. Like I got to, it's that's just, fun. it's just such a cool opportunity. And um, Cameron and Michael, they're just so cool. Mm -hmm. And Matt. Yeah. Our bass player. Yeah, we we have a lot of fun. That's cool. Yeah, and I, I'm always fascinated by that. Like I'm always fascinated by the different genres, for example, of that this genre kind of does this very, very well, like country with storytelling or something, you know, and then classical has like this insane stratosphere kind of technique kind of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. They they have different strengths, but players also fascinate me in that way where this guy has this smoothest tone you've ever seen mm -hmm. and this guy his technique is terrible but his like improv ideas are so cool and you know you know everybody has their uniqueness yeah. and that's kind of why I asked you that because sometimes you get a person in the band that had really good for example the other the old person was kind of choosing notes really wisely and they had good tone and sound but then the next guy comes in he doesn't really have that but he's much more exciting and he has more you know, like can play faster stuff mm -hmm. and it's just different right I mean it's mm -hmm. not I don't know if you you know you, you you're kind of saying that yeah, I guess that I you're mean, just two different players I can't, can't help you know. it that I'm gonna be compared to Shane for mm -hmm. forever yeah you know um, but, and I, I did try, I mean, I tried <laughs> to be like him. I tried and I still do try. Right. I mean, he's, a, he's amazing to model your playing after cause he's right. so technically perfect and he's very innovative with his, with, you know, all the musical ideas and stuff. So I, I just, you know, I'm going to try to do that, but I'm also like really getting into like my own thing, which is kind of just letting myself go when I mm -hmm. have a fiddle in my hand in front of an audience. Like, yeah. I'm going to say something, and I hope you don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you're not gonna forget it. You're not gonna forget yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, shred your face <laughs> off. But, uh, but yeah, and, and again, I'm not even mentioning that for just in that situation. I'm just thinking more broadly about when people take over for others. That just fascinates me. And just yeah. try, people trying to not have that mentality of, well, you're no. not him, well, you know. Well, Flanagan's is a different band now. That's yeah, another right. thing. Like, yeah. if, if there's a new person, like, filling in somebody's shoes, that whole thing is, like, it's hard. It's yeah. hard to be compared to someone. I was compared to my sister my whole childhood, mm. and we were we were both violinists. We both, mm. you know, That's did well tough. in school yeah, yeah, yeah. and did, you know, um, yeah. We were involved in all the same things, and we were constantly compared to each other. And it was so difficult because there you deal with like jealousy and like self loathing. You deal mm. with you go into a dark place, and that or you can you, you could you yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. to. Yeah. I did. But I'm not doing that anymore because every every person has like something to say, just like you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, don't focus on on your weaknesses. Like really listen to what your deepest truth is, and then just do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be the same as anyone else. Don't look to anybody else for your own answers. Yeah, basically, yeah. it's yeah. a lesson to learn from that. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so so what are you? Like I'll say, I'll say for me, so with, when I'm playing, one thing that, that I know, like, like with the kind of technique of it, not, not that I'm like spacing out and what am I going to do tomorrow kind of stuff while I'm at the gig, but I'm thinking about like with the notes and the rhythms, I've like, you know, I'm so far past, you know, like when we're playing random country songs, like I'm not even thinking about that. I'm like going on autopilot with that. Oh, shoot. And, and, and it's because... You, like for example, my technique. I'm not thinking about my bow grip. It's already there. You know, I like my where. Dude, where's... that bow hand looks good. Let me show you mine. Sometimes I literally do this. Hmm, that's and interesting. Yeah. Sometimes 
it's like, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like look where this callus is. Right yeah, here. that's funny. That's, yeah, that's yeah. wrong, you know, <laughs> which is really funny. But yeah, dang. Like I try to do this and I start playing that way and then, you know, I'm playing with flame again and, and I get mad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my bow hairs start breaking and my hand just kind of like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you start going into your, I into know, your first I finger. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and like, so the technique stuff for me, you know, I start at three, just like, you know, I, so, I mean, the technique is just not even worried about, but like for improv for example, what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about when do I play? Like when, when, when should, should I, I play? Uh, when should I be throwing in this riff? When should I be throwing in that riff? When, you know, okay, now we're on comping. Okay. I need to back off. Okay. Soloing. Now I need this shredder face up, you know, like that's the kind of stuff that I'm thinking about while I'm playing. Um, what, what, what are you thinking about when you're up there? That's a good question. I, I do get really insecure when I'm on stage sometimes. Mm. And sometimes I'm just like, Oh my God, I can't play. You know? <laughs> and then other times I'm like, I love my violin. <laughs> <laughs> That's you funny. like that? That's funny. <laughs> it's all dependent. I love this. You know, like, <laughs> Sounds so good. <laughs> but yeah, I totally like, well, it just depends on my emotional, mental mm -hmm. state. Yeah. And sometimes if I'm going through something, you can tell. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you can tell. Yeah. And, but like, I know that I have the power to just be present and be on stage, you know? <sighs> I think about all kinds of things. Sometimes I just look at the people. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, or I'll just like try and mess with someone, mm, like just yeah. make eye contact. Right. I don't really think, I do try to like be intelligent with my playing, you know, mm. obviously. But, yeah. But sometimes I just like, I'm over it. I'm just gonna have a good mm -hmm. time. And yeah, I, I overplay. I, I, mm -hmm. will, I will admit that. I play too much. I do. I love to play. I love to mess with whatever everyone else is doing. If I hear yeah. something, I'm like, yeah, me too. Right. Um, you know, in a performance setting, I know, you know, wait till the solo and like, you know, be smart and play long tones or chop or whatever. Right. But I do like to stretch out. And that's yeah. another thing I love about playing again. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can do whatever I want. If I right. started just doing something weird, Cameron would just be like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know. Right. And they, they just go with it. They're so down, you mm -hmm. know, for whatever sound I make. And I think like li the most important thing to follow that rule that you're trying to nail right now, mm -hmm. like that you're talking about, yeah, is just listen, make sure you know what's going on. And as mm -hmm. soon as you can hear everything that's going on and you hear what you're gonna do, then do it and keep listening, you know, yeah, yeah. and then and just be sensitive, yeah. like, yeah, I, I'm guilty of breaking that rule all the time because mm -hmm. I love to play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, the older I get, the, the calmer I'm being. I'm like, oh, I yeah. have a lot of time. More time has passed. I have a better yeah. sense of time. I have the rest of my life to play all the notes I want. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably natural. The, the get, you know, the, when, when we're all really young, we want to shred everybody's face yeah. off. And, then, and I've definitely had that before. And, and I love, I love asking that because I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm, I'm way too intellectual when I play. Like I'm really sitting there every mm -hmm. moment and going Thinking like, about okay, music. we're on second. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm sitting there way before the song even starts. Okay. I'm going to back off first verse. I'm not even going to play anything. Chorus comes in. Okay. A little bit. All right. Okay. I'll give them the little thing. I'm going to build this up to the double stops. I'm going to, you know, I'm going, I'm like three, I'm three chess moves ahead when I play, you know, and Dang. like, you know, and, and like, but that not, that's not always good because I don't, I, I'm, think, I'm thinking it, I'm thinking it out, which is Stop never thinking, that bad. Rob. Why do you think so much? Yeah, well, uh, you know what you should try? Other people suck because they don't think at all. They, they just blast through at, 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 they turn their amp up to seven. They do, you know, and they just blast through and just barrel through everyone. And then the crowd That's hates me. their life, you know? <laughs> But, uh, uh, but at the same time, all of that stuff doesn't let me let loose because I'm always okay. reserved, always thinking. So uh, you, you know, know what you need to do? I'm just going to go ahead and tell you do what it. you need to do. <laughs> do it. <laughs> just like turn up your amp or whatever <laughs> and just shred someone's face off. Did mm -hmm. you ever do that? Like well, you... at different songs, I do that. But, but you but do there's... it only when you think it's appropriate? Yes. No, you, yes. I mean, you need to just get mad and, and just do it. Just, just fucking go for it. Sorry, yeah. excuse me. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just, just go for it. Mm. Um, it feels good. And I, that's, I kind of came from the opposite camp of you. Like now mm. I'm starting to come to, right. oh, I need to listen. Oh yeah, now I can amp it up. Okay, right. now I can. But I, 
I think it's so great to go the other way. Mm -hmm. Find both sides of the uh, polarity there. Mm -hmm. And then, and really know what it feels like to be on either side. Right. And then figure out what you want to do and what you want to say. Yeah. Like, I think there's, it, there's something to be said for creating a healthy space, you know, for teachers. Um, they need to teach their students, like... You know, get don't look at the music. Just just do what feels good. Don't stop mm. them and correct their technique. Just let mm. them play. Just let them say stuff. Mm. Let them get it out. And then be like, okay, you know, and be really encouraging. And then also go to the other side. Be like, listen to your playing. Stay there. Now pull your boat, you know, and do the whole other right. side. Like you got to do both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I probably, like I just said, I probably go too far to the too much thinking stuff. And, and then um, you get super annoyed with people that go to the not thinking enough stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah, and and the and it's really the the word I, I didn't coin this word obviously, but the, this is what I've come to with doing the show is what I get annoyed at is cluelessness, musical cluelessness that pisses me off more what than do you anything. Mean? Expand on okay, that. I'll, I'll ex I, any number of things. I, I mentioned another thing. Lady gets up at a jam. What song do you want to do? Oh, let's do this. What key? Well, I don't know. You know, like she she doesn't know. And then what can she's you doing. pick a key for her? Sure. You know. And but... then and then does she sing it or what? Because singers, every musician is different. Like mm -hmm. singers, they don't tend to know. That, I mean. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. You're going to have to bleep that part out. <laughs> I love singers. There's some highly trained oh, yeah. and intelligent yeah, singers sure. that are shredders. Yeah. But there are a lot of chick singers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's just a lot of them. Um, it's not I'm, chick singers. It's a, it, I'm just making an example. Guys do that too. You know, it's, like, it's, not, a, it's not about girl and guy. It's, it's about, okay, here's another example. Guy gets up at a jam. Everybody else is amps at three and he turns up to seven. Has no idea he's blasting over everybody in the crowd. Oh, can't you know, hear. that's what that improvisational kinda... concepts, that class I took at Berkeley, mm -hmm. you know, listen and mm -hmm. be sensitive. Yeah. Like it taught us sensitivity on such a deep level mm -hmm. um, that, you know. An another example is a guy getting up there and calling giant steps at a blues jam. Come on guys, you can do it. No, freaking idiot. No, he's not gonna call giant steps with some song with like yeah. 12 chords in it and we're at a blues jam. I'm like, this is gonna be a train wreck, but he doesn't understand. He's just like, okay, we'll be able to do it. No, we're not gonna be, I can do that. Okay, so do you know your whole I mean? problem is be goes beyond the world of music. It's called self-awareness. Yes, okay? self-awareness. It it's yeah. not just in music, it's in the workplace. Everyone knows that this is like endemic everywhere there's that person that's just not self-aware mm -hmm. so everyone please be self-aware whether you're a musician or you know working whatever mm -hmm. you know just be self-aware especially yeah. you know even in social sit settings if you're at the bar or whatever be self-aware there too with your friends with your relationships with your most important relationships maybe you're not self-aware enough there like mm -hmm. that that is a very important thing yeah 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 and that, you know, that's a great way to yourself. put it Think about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's think about yourself yeah. and everyone else and what the whole thing would like. Step outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. Some people just never learn to do that. Yeah. And it's not it's not really in our our nobody teaches that. How do you teach self awareness? Yeah, I mean you gotta unless it's modeled you, for you as a child. You can stop somebody. You could just stop them, but like a kid, you know, stop them. Okay. Before you do something, look around at this room. You know, you can you can show them some right. stuff. You know, look around and at I this room. What do you see? And I guess a jam is know? a safe place to do that. At a jam, you can be like, hey, you know, we're all about here. Let's you're a little loud. Like, let's turn down. Mm -hmm. It's hard to. How does that go that. over usually? I know. You know, I know. That, so be we, self aware, so no one yeah. has to suffer through your ego. Yeah, we we could I go mean, another yeah. two hours on that because I'm really passionate about that. But um, <laughs> to, we're probably getting pretty close here. Um, yeah. Last thing I'll ask you is, um, you, you talked about playing that Vegas show. What's a, what's a really like really, really fun or really like crazy moment in your career or a, or a gig that was yeah. crazy or, or Dang. bad or good or whatever, oh, you know, I mean, any story you want. That's a question. Story time. Okay. Um, well, I had a very fancy gig with Flanagan's mm -hmm. in Naples in June. We got to stay at a five star, five star. Florida. Resort. Yeah, Naples, okay. Florida. Not Italy. It was Florida, <laughs> but still Florida. You know, and um, Naples, Florida. Um, we performed two nights in a row for a crowd that loved us, mm -hmm. and we played. I think like two two hours each night or something. Mm -hmm. The second night maybe we played three hours, but it was just so much fun. Like they really valued us. You know, mm -hmm. they were just like so. 
they really valued our talent and that was really amazing for me to experience something like that. Um, the other thing is I was a music director at a synagogue for about three and a half years. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. yeah, it was very, you know how I talked about teaching and how you like give yourself to your students. Yeah. Like I gave myself to that congregation mm -hmm. for three and a half years. Yeah. And I, I made the music into something that I was like, I think this will be sustainable for the congregation. And that it like, you know how powerful music is and like mm. we hold such power as, you know, any human does, but like as musicians, it's like this very beautiful um, thing that we have to share. So I tried to make something like that everyone could tap into in that community. Mm -hmm. And I am really proud of the work I did there. Um, that was an amazing opportunity. Um, what else? I played with Rod Stewart and really? I almost poked him in the eye with my bow. <laughs> yeah, he turns around and looks at me and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he yeah. Goes Let's see. Yeah, famous, famous gig, famous people gig. Yeah. Um, I have quit, played. Quit name dropping, all right? No, I'm just kidding. I know, right? I mean, I feel like just you kind of just asked me to name I drop. Did. So I, I know. Can. I'm giving crap. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I really feel like every gig is so different than the last. Mm -hmm. Like, as someone yeah. who genre hops, and like, I have like six different fiddles that I gig with regularly. Right based on what the gig is. Right. And it's like, it's an amazing thing. Like I work with Quixotic Fusion sometimes. Mm -hmm. People are like flying around, doing flips and doing amazing things. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, getting to be a part of something yeah. spectacular. You know? Right. Um, I mean, that, something like that's gotta be a way different show. It's yeah, so different. I mean, than, than even different. Flanagan's. Oh I my mean, God. You, you've got all this stuff, you it's know. It's so different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just, I just did a flamenco show, my first oh, flamenco that's fun. Yeah, yeah. with the dancers. Yeah. They're just shredding, you You're know? Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's so much more out there, too. So, mm. yeah. I that's think cool. it's going to be really fun to just see what's possible, mm -hmm. you know? Music and playing the fiddle. Who knew, like, starting on classical violin, like, mm -hmm. it just has brought my life to so many different places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's maybe, maybe what we'll end with there is that, like, that's, that's why I take my students into classical first, is that I, I you like, you I mean, in the classical way. I mean, the, it, the, the reason why I do that is because by the time you get into, into college, you've played in basically every key. You know, mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're at least familiar with playing in D flat, mate, you know, you're, yeah. you're, and you, you've pretty much played as fast to as slow as you can, mm -hmm. you know, so fast and slow. Um, you, you're getting dynamics like crazy. I mean, you know, Good point. Um, you're getting, te you're getting all sorts of articulations uh -huh. like crazy. you you've done spiccato, you've done legato, you know, yeah. um, and you know, you just basically have done all I will the stuff. Say, the problem with classical is it doesn't teach you how to shred. Like it teaches you how to shred cleanly and everyone's yes. so careful yes. with yeah. classical. But right. people need to learn yeah. how to right. say something. It definitely teaches you how to play fast. There's some fast as shit classical yeah, music. Yeah, that know? stuff but, is all incredibly valuable. But it's valuable, clean. Obviously. It's clean. It's clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my problem when I try to play Irish music. Is that I, too clean? I, I? It's too clean. It sounds like a classical person oh. playing Irish music, which is exactly what it is. Oh yeah, that's what you I know? And like. so yeah, I don't you know? really care. I mean, I'm just yeah, like whatever. And, I sound classical. And so you know, I definitely because I've done a lot of improv, I can screw with the Boeing's on the fly and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. But when I do it, you know, again, I'm, you know, I'm playing it like a classical person, and that's fine. I'm not an Irish musician. It is what it is, you know. But that's, uh, but that's, just something that I've noticed with them is is that you you get taught how to play really cleanly and that I agree and swing the swing beat too is yeah. something that we don't do very much in classical as much no. but but uh, the shredding and the swing beat but basically everything else you're kind of ready for you know and and so that's why I like to do that first and then you get over to oh, you get over to country another, another problem with yeah. classical is you never get away from the page. Yes, right, and improv. I mean, yeah, and yeah. then when you yeah. memorize, you're like so nervous that you're not gonna remember the notes, you know? Oh, yeah. It completely defeats the purpose. Well, I was Suzuki, so I'm never worried about that. You know, I'm just like insane memory, you know, oh, so my personal, you crazy. know. See, yeah. I wasn't that Suzuki. Yeah. I was a little Suzuki. I didn't go through the whole thing, but it, but yeah. it, uh, early. But anyway, the, that's what, that's why I go through, or I take them through classical stuff first. Is that's good. They get I, into I country mean, and they're like, oh, okay. You yeah. know, like, 
Oh, you mean not a four-page, like, concerto? I'll, all I have to play is, like, three chords? Oh, okay, you know. Yeah, but all I have to play is three chords can be very daunting for someone who's never played off the page. Right, yeah, and that's you what's know? hard about it. But um, I'm, ta I'm spe spe specifically talking about the technique of it. I'm like, oh, oh okay, right. you know. Yeah. The technique is, like, I, I know, mean, but, like, the having you know. something to say, I think, needs yeah. to be taught. Yeah. Like, know Agreed. how to pick up your instrument and communicate yeah. without reverting to a song or, right. like, something you have memorized, like... You know, know how to, what your instrument does and how it sounds and how you speak. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's a, a, like a language, you know, it's a language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It should be taught with a lot. It can be taught along slide, mm -hmm. along slide. Yeah, slide. <laughs> along slide. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you, yeah. And I, I agree with that. I think you need to, you, you can do both. Mm -hmm. Like while they're, you know, during their elementary, middle school, high school age, I yeah. mean, you can throw that at them, right? Right. I mean. So yeah. I think they should, but, uh, uh, that's it. That's it. Colleen Deeker. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Lots of fun. Wonderful job. Uh, Thank you. This is number 50. Woo, it's been happy really fun doing. Yeah, thanks. Uh, been really fun doing the show so far. We're going to have a ton more, ton more left, uh, left to go. So, um, that was amazing. Mario? <laughs> yeah. Mario's awesome. Uh, get out of here. Take it easy. See ya. Peace.